think it's actually uh, a credible uh, theory. Okay, here, here's the article. Scientific American, October 2004, page 62. If amphibians evolved before mammals, why do some amphibians have five times more DNA than mammals and some amoeba have a thousand times more DNA sure. than mammals? And, uh, Jonathan's point and a lung fish has, has uh, 30 times as much DNA as we have. Okay, here's but, a... but I mean, okay, first of all, have you ever heard of a chromosome duplication? Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's your answer. There's my answer? You, you're, are you saying it's just simply duplicated information, it's not new information? That's what you're implying. Why couldn't it be duplicated information? And why isn't that new information? A polyploidy? That's not, that's not new information. Sure, why not? Oh. You could just then change the, the, those genes are, are free to, to evolve however they want. But now you're just drawing the, the problem away from the point I was making about common ancestry because this has nothing to do with, with common ancestry. Well, you're totally... Uh, I, 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 I consider this actually a, a, an incredible victory for me because well, one it's second. clear that you, want, you don't want to discuss common ancestry. Martin, you said to disprove common ancestry, I think this was the only example you gave, was to find a plant cell within... Uh, of dragonfly, and that would disprove common ancestry. That's one example ancestry. of how you could do it. There's uh, many different ways of doing it. Okay, now wait, wait, wait. Martin, now wait, wouldn't wouldn't a creationist be shooting himself in the foot to do that? No, because God can make things however He wants, and you would just have proved <laughs> proven that there were no restrictions on how He could make uh, things. See, here's the problem, Martin. If a person who believes in evolution is doing the classification then the classification will always fit their evolution theory. Sure, but that's the thing. Because they have a classification, they've built a rigorous tree uh, that now cannot you cannot have violations in it. All you need to do to test it, you as a creationist, go into the lab, take their tree that they produce, and study any of these organisms based on the character distribution provided by the tree and find a counterexample that, that has to come from way off on another branch of their same okay, tree. Okay, okay, really. let me try to give you one. Are there any animals that you know of that contain chlorophyll? There are none that I know of. No. Okay. Is that because if it contains chlorophyll, it's no longer classed as an animal? No. I've actually because got tomatoes. No, uh, no, see, that's, that's exactly where you, where you missed the point. I've got it's tomatoes not and lettuce in right now, so that's plant cells within... Jonathan has chlorophyll in him right now. He had lettuce yeah. late earlier. Okay. Yeah, okay. That is true. No, this is not. This is not about similarity. This is not about individual you were characters. About this oh is about God. unique combinations of okay. characters. Chlorophyll and a cell wall in a in a in a dragonfly would not ended up classified as a plant. It would be classified as what the heck is this? Okay. <laughs> I mean, totally that would be a violation of the nested set. That's a perfect example of how to test it. Okay, hang on, Martin. You're totally missing Jonathan's point. He asked you earlier, how would you falsify your evolution theory? You've told us 20 ways you would prove it. How would you falsify the evolution I just theory? I explained how you would falsify Find a pine cone grown out of somebody's head. Find that a pine cone in somebody's head. That would head. prove that humans and trees are not okay. related. Are there any plants that move? No, actually, that's a, that's a very good example. Uh, showing a, a human growing a, a pine cone out of its head. Uh, would be something that evolution could not explain because... Oh, come on. No, because pine they cones would, they would belong right to drive. pine trees, which are a separate clade that all belong to a separate common ancestor, and that this feature, pine cones, is a unique attribute which defines that group. That would not be human being, evolution. That would simply, if anything, no, modify the you evolutionary don't understand, you, don't, you clearly don't understand the basic pre premises upon which theory of common ancestry is based. It's it's built you would upon never, you would never think that. Okay. It's built, the theory of common ancestry is built on the assumption that evolution is true, and therefore it's no, not No, it's possible. not, actually. It's built on the assumption of, uh, actually, a very strongly supported mathematical assumption that okay. nested hierarchies are generated by, by branching processes. Okay. We've got to close in two minutes. Let me just ask you one final question here. And I ask this to everybody that, that believes in evolution, if I get an opportunity to ask them. Have you accepted the evolution theory because you really think there's scientific evidence or because this creation theory would affect your lifestyle if you accepted it? I accept it because not only do I believe that there's good evidence for it, but I've actually seen and handled much of that evidence on a daily basis. You've seen evidence that dogs produce non-dogs? Uh, no, because I'm not 
said saying, or nobody's ever say, said that dogs produce non-dogs. But I do, have seen very good evidence that dogs have come from another ancestor that is closely related to other carnivorous mammals. Well, you are certainly welcome to believe that. However, I don't yeah, think you I know, understand Yeah, I know. I've heard all of this before. But yeah. you it was nice to talking to you. Have a good evening. Hey, thank you. Have Call a great show. Call any time or instant any time. Glad to have you on the program. Well, folks, we're about out of time here. Uh, people are certainly welcome to believe that, but that is a religion if I ever heard it, and I resent paying for that to be taught in the school system. So that's our stand here, and we are not government-funded, and we take the position that if somebody wants to believe that dragonfly and a platypus have a common ancestor, that's wonderful. I don't want to pay for that to be taught in the school. That it violates common sense and violates observations. We see dogs produce dogs, no exceptions that I'm aware of. It just, I didn't quite understand. See, he went through and he was showing different properties that different organisms share. See, a dragonfly and a platypus are both bilaterally symmetri- you know, symmetrical, and therefore they have a common ancestor. But what about you know the different nautiloids and stuff like this? They're not bilaterally, bilaterally symmetrical. These nautiloids aren't. Wait, wait, my swing set is bilaterally sym- sym- symmetrical. It's got a chain on each side. <laughs> It is, Jonathan. Uh-huh. I think it's just and a the, personal and the bicycle symmetry. wheel is radial symmetry. That's, that's related to starfish. Yeah, the proof. Okay, well, there we have it, folks. All right, if you want to instant message us, it may be too late. Dr. Dino Live, D R D I N O L I V. We appreciate the call from Sweden. We get calls from all over. I still have to disagree, and uh, I think I've uh, never seen an exception to uh, Second Peter chapter 3. The reason people scoff at the Bible view is not because they have a real scientific evidence, but because of their.